no, 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 no. theme song. But -da 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 -da. I got a theme song. It's my theme song. Yeah. So, uh, I got asked to stay late at work yesterday. And I was like, yes, because I need money. And there's like actually a pot of coffee in the break room, which like never happens. And I'm like, ooh, coffee. I haven't had that in a long time. I'll drink some and then I'll be awake for the remainder of the shift that I've been asked to stay. And I did and it was great. And then I got home around noon and I was like, man, I am not tired at all. So I proceeded to stay up till 8 p.m. even though I work later tonight at 4 a.m. And I was like, well, I can still get like six hours of sleep and then make something in an hour and go to work. Went to sleep. At 11, my body was like, yes, time to wake up and do things. Super. So now I'm awake, and I'm going to read you a chapter. Um, so last time, uh, Daniel read shit. Oh, also, I uh, part of Megan Eli's Kickstarter was to fund a website for this book, a supplementary, and I found it. And uh, important thing to know is that I was totally right when I said Leopold and Almond are the Am Ahmed. Sorry, I said Almond. He's not an almond. Uh, anyway, they're the same person. Uh, there are there are pictures, and they they are actually the same person. I'll put a link down there in the description and you can look it's the website it's really sparse and not worth a thousand dollars i really don't know what she did with that money anyway chapter six grief makes us all act strangely also i'm not drinking because you know i gotta work i should probably have poured myself some water or something though so you know my throat doesn't get so scratchy we'll see we'll just that when it gets to that <clears throat> As the, prince, as the prince struggled with his sanity in the tower, wow, how long has he been in here? Like a day? Chill the fuck out, dog. Struggled with his sanity in the tower, the world outside was equally off kilter. The king had called upon news media of all sorts and announced the, quote, sudden and tragic death of his only son. See, if you're gonna tell the world he's dead, why not just actually kill him? The kingdom wept as they heard the news, and the story quickly spread from print to television to internet fame. Even Leopold's castle wall page had become a memorial to him and his life, which everyone believed had been cut far too short. Annabeth had withdrawn into her quarters and refused to speak to anyone, which only lent more credibility to her husband's story. Her guilt was immense, both for allowing her son to be locked away and for the par and for part to be locked away and for the participate. Excuse me. Wow, the sentence. Her guilt was immense, both for allowing her son to be locked away and for the particulars regarding his conception. Over the years, her longing for Geoffrey had turned her into shame. She had convinced herself that they had what they had done was very wrong and feared what might happen if the public ever found out. In love or not, having a relationship with someone who fell so far outside her own class, especially having conceived an heir to the throne with him, was even more taboo than her son's sexuality, and she worried that they may both suffer a much worse fate if she made the prince's true lineage known. Why do you need to make his lineage known? That literally has nothing to do with anything right now. No one's questioning it. In the tower, she could ensure he would at least ha have at least some degree of safety. 
She wanted nothing more than to protect Leopold as much as was possible, though living without him was the most painful thing she could imagine having to endure. The only disbeliever in the whole of the kingdom was Ahmed. The whole of the kingdom, I hate that phrase. He knew why Leopold had been called to meet with his parents, and he knew exactly what his friend intended to tell them. While he feared the reports of the prince's death may be true, his heart told him it was all a lie. He didn't believe there has been a sudden or tragic accident. Although the king was stupid and irrational, Ahmad didn't believe the man was foolish enough to have his own son put to death. Why not? I don't understand. Like, what's the reason why he couldn't kill his own son? Because there should be a reason for that, obviously, right? That's good story. That's good world building. Good story writing is to have a reason for why your characters do things. What is the king's reason for locking away his son instead of killing him? I literally cannot think of an answer to this. Trusting almost no one, he went to his mother. It can't be true, Ahmed told her. I know how hard this must be for you, my son. Death is a fact of life, though. You cannot assume the news is untrue simply because you've lost someone close to you. You've never lost someone close to you before. I understand that, mother. That's not it. You must believe me. Leopold is out there somewhere, probably scared and alone. How can I turn a blind eye when my friend is likely suffering? So based on no information, I assume he's out there, scared and alone, because, I don't know, true love. Rainy spoke sternly. Ahmad, you must listen to me. Leopold is gone. You have to face that reality. I'm sure it's difficult having never gotten to say goodbye, but that is something you'll have to learn to cope with over time. If he's dead, it was the king who killed him. Rainy clapped her hand over her son's mouth. You could find yourself in a similar fate if you keep spouting such words, she whispered. You speak from a place of pain right now. While I understand your desire to blame someone, I urge you to keep your accusations to yourself. No one actually talks like this. This is like, let me plot for you using my character's smiles. I'm sorry, Mother, but I have to know. Ahmed turned to leave, intending to find the king and hopefully some closure. Because the king will definitely tell you if he murdered his son or not. And his mother just let him do this? His mother let him confront the king about possibly killing his own son? That's a good way to get your son killed! Why, you're a terrible mother! You are a terrible mother! Ahmed was relieved to find him alone, but immediately noticed the man looked rather smug and satisfied, not nearly as distraught as one would expect after having supposedly just lost his young son. Unless he killed his son. Your Majesty, Ahmed squeaked, knowing it was, wasn't entirely his place to approach the king in such a way. The king pivoted to face the boy. Yes? Ahmed bowed his head. I'd like to offer my condolences, sir. I can't imagine the pain you and the queen must be suffering right now. Yes, we're rather upset indeed, said the king, his poor attempt at fang and sorrow coming across as something more akin to constipation. Again, I'm going to bring back showing and not telling, because there's been a lot of telling right now about how the king doesn't appear to be sad, and the king is bad at faking sadness. Like, you could visually, like, show us this with words. That was a bad sentence, but like, you know, like, shifty eyes, or like, a uh, twitch of the lip into a, a, like, a smug smile. Like, these kind of details you can write to show someone's not remorseful, instead of just saying, the king was not remorseful. It's... As well, you know, Leopold was a good friend of mine, and I also feel the sting of his loss. It was quite a shock. It was. Heartbreak is rampant throughout the kingdom. What a useless sentence. Ahmed hesitated. I don't know how to put this delicately, but I must ask for my own peace of mind. How did he die, exactly? 
The king was visibly shaken by the question. Because you didn't think of this beforehand? Oh, my son died, but I didn't think of a good lie for how he died. What? No, stop. The king was visibly shaken by the question. It hadn't crossed its feeble mind that anyone might be so bold as to ask such a thing. He fell, he fell victim to a terrible accident, the king replied, hoping to satisfy the boy. What sort of accident, he cried. The man was confounded, as he had never bothered to consider the specifics of Leopold's supposed death. A horse-drawn cart, he replied, his tone making it sound more like a question than an answer. A horse-drawn cart killed Leopold? Armand questioned incredulously. incredulously. Yes, the king nodded, proud to have come up with a seemingly possible answer. Ahmed's face contorted with confusion. How? Um, er, the king stammered. Quickly, painfully, I suspect. What? Ahmed shrieked. You were there? Did you see it happen? No, no, of course not. So only the driver saw what happened, yet there's no investigation? Driver? There was no driver, the king replied, flustered. Only the horses know for sure. We questioned them for hours, but they refused to talk. They are being held in the dungeon as we speak. Ahmed's eyes widened. Question the horses? He paused for a beat as he pro processed the ludicrous new information he was being given. If there was no driver, then who was who found him? The king was mentally exhausted. All... Someone else can find a body. Like... Mm. This whole exchange is... Blah, blah. The king was mentally exhausted, all out of lies. This is a very upsetting line of questioning, and it's inappropriate. His death is still quite fresh in my mind, and the wound is still rather raw in my heart. Please leave me to grieve. Amma knew... In that moment, Leopold was out there somewhere. Why? That's a perfectly legitimate thing to do, because it's a complete asshole thing to do to go up to a grieving parent and be like, like, ask all these questions, these detailed questions. Like, he gave you an answer, but you're like, oh, no. Let me let me keep pursuing this line of thought, because there's no way that would be hurtful if their son actually died in a terrible accident. Amma knew in that moment Leopold was out there somewhere. And he knew it was his job to find and rescue him. 